Debt Market Update, March 2022 FY22 witness bond yields moving within a range during first half of the fiscal year, aided by ample surplus liquidity, regular interventions by RBI, and lower-than-expected market borrowings in FY22 by the central government. Yields rose substantially in the second half driven by elevated CPI, strong recovery, sustained global inflation and rise in yields in AEs, along with reduced RBI's intervention. Further, steps taken by RBI towards policy normalizations, introduction of VRRR, market sale of securities, buy or sell forex swaps and higher than expected market borrowings for FY23 by central government put further upward pressure on the yields. Thus, the 10-year benchmark GSEC yield ended the year at 6.84% higher by 67 basis points compared to a year ago. The yields at short end rose relatively less visibly long end, thus steepening the curve. The spread between 10Y AAA corporate bond yields and GSEC narrowed by 45 basis points during the year on lower credit concerns and reduced corporate bond supply. Average interbank liquidity increased during the year, driven by large infusion by RBI through OMOs, foreign exchange purchases, GSAP, etc. Further, soft credit growth vis a vis deposit growth also resulted in higher interbank liquidity. FPIs turned net buyers in FY22 and bought debt worth 2.2 billion US dollars as compared to being net sellers of 2.2 billion US dollars in FY21. Credit markets were stable during the year with no significant rise in NPAs despite successive pandemic waves. The credit spread remained range bound and mostly at lower levels compared to historical average indicating improvement in credit environment. Outlook in response to pandemic, RBI took many proactive measures in FY21, like reduction in policy rates, maintaining ample surplus liquidity, LTROs, TLTROs, etc. In FY22, RBI followed up the same with some more measures, like conducting GSAP 1.0 and 2.0, wherein it committed predetermined amount to be bought under OMOs, Operation Twist, etc. Further, despite high inflation, RBI kept the policy rates and stance unchanged with a view to support growth. The proactive actions taken by the RBI kept a lid on the yields during the first half of the year. However, during the second half of the year, the intervention reduced. Further, the introduction of long-duration VRRR was construed as a first step towards policy normalization. While RBI remained supportive through most parts of FY22, conditions turned adverse for Indian fixed income markets. Domestic economy witnessed a strong rebound, which along with supply chain disruption resulted in CPI and WPI surprising on the upside. Parallelly, strong global growth and sustained increase in energy and commodity prices triggered worries of global inflation persisting more than anticipated. This resulted in central banks swinging into action and accelerating pace of monetary normalization, causing sharp rise in US Treasury yields. Further. Factors like high SLR holdings of banks, higher than expected government borrowings for FY23, and muted FPI flows exacerbated the upward pressure on yields. On an overall basis, the yields moved within a narrow range in first half of the year and rose meaningfully only in second half of the year. Once the RBI intervention reduced, an announcement of higher than expected borrowings by central government for FY23. Going forward, in view of elevated energy prices, widening of current account deficit, lower RBI interventions, normalization of monetary policy, etc., we believe that yields are likely to trade within a range with an upward bias. Further, gradual normalization of monetary policy is also likely to put upward pressure on yields, especially at the short end. In view of the aforesaid and relatively steep yield curve, we continue to recommend investments into short to medium duration debt funds, possibly in a staggered manner, in line with individual risk appetite. While credit environment still warrants caution, measures by RBI have eased the spreads on AAA rated bonds significantly. However, opportunities exist in select pockets of non AAA rated bonds as their spreads relative to AAA rated bonds are still at reasonable levels. Hence, Allocation to credit-oriented schemes or funds with some non-AAA exposure could be maintained or increased to a certain extent. 
in line with individual risk appetite. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.